Adventures of Millie Molly Mandy by Joyce Lancaster Brisley. Chapter 6 Millie Molly Mandy Enjoys a Visit Once upon a time, Millie Molly Mandy was invited to go for a little visit to an old friend of mother's who lived in a nearby town. Uncle was to take her in the pony trap on Saturday morning on his way to market and fetch her on Sunday evening so that she should be ready for school the next day. So Millie Molly Mandy would spend a whole night away from home, which was very exciting to think of. But just a day or two before she was to go, Mother received a letter from her friend to say she was so sorry, but she couldn't have Millie Molly Mandy after all as a married son and his wife had come unexpectedly to pay her a visit. Millie Molly Mandy had to try very hard not to feel dreadfully disappointed, for she had never been away from home by herself before, and she had not been looking forward to it so much. Never mind, Millie Molly Mandy, said Mother, when Saturday morning arrived, and Millie Molly Mandy came down to breakfast looking rather solemn. There are nice things happening all the time if you keep your eyes open to see them. Millie Molly Mandy said, Yes, Mother, in a small voice as she took her seat, though it didn't seem just then as if anything could possibly happen as nice as going away to stay. But while Father and Mother and Grandpa and Grandma and Uncle and Auntie and Millie Molly Mandy were at breakfast, Mrs Moggs, who was little friend Susan's mother, came round in a great hurry without a hat, and Mrs Moggs told them how some friends who had to go to town on business had offered her a seat in their jig, and as Mrs Moggs's mother lived there, Mrs Moggs thought it was a nice opportunity to go and see her, only she couldn't leave little friend Susan alone all day. So Millie Molly Mandy's mother said, let her come round here, Mrs Moggs. Millie Molly Mandy would like to have her, and I don't suppose you'll be back too late, so she'd better spend the night here too. Millie Molly Mandy was pleased, and Mrs Moggs thanked them very much indeed, and they all wished Mrs Moggs a nice trip, and then Mrs Moggs ran back home to get ready. Where will Susan sleep? In the spare room? asked Millie Molly Mandy, making haste to finish her breakfast. Yes, said Mother, and you had better sleep there too to keep her company. Millie Molly Mandy was very much pleased at that, for she had never slept in the spare room. Her cot bed was in the corner of Father and Mother's room. Why, Mother, she said, I can't have a visit of my own, but I'll just be able to enjoy Susan's instead, shan't I? Perhaps it'll be almost quite as nice. She helped to wash the, up the breakfast things and to make up the spare room bed and to dust. And then she was just looking out of the window, thinking how nice it would be for Susan to wake up in the morning with a new view outside, when what did she see but little friend Susan herself, trudging along up the road with a basket on one arm and her coat on the other. So she ran down to the gate to welcome her in. And though Millie Molly Mandy and little friend Susan met almost every day and very often spent the whole day together, somehow it felt so different to think little friend Susan was going to stay the night with Millie Molly Mandy that they couldn't help giving an extra skip or two after they had kissed each other. Millie Molly Mandy took her to see mother and then they went up to the spare room to unpack little friend Susan's basket. They put her nightgown and brush and comb and toothbrush and slippers in their proper places and decided which sides of the bed they were going to sleep. And they found each wanted the side that the other one didn't, which was nice. Though, of course, Millie Molly Mandy would have given little friend Susan first choice anyway. Then Millie Molly Mandy showed little friend Susan round the room and let her admire the fat silk pincushion on the dressing table and the hair tidy that Auntie had painted and the ornaments on the chest of drawers, the china dogs with the rough feeling coats and little girl with the china lace skirt. And while they were looking at the fretwork bracket which father had made for mother before they were married, Auntie came running up to say that Uncle was just going to drive to market and they might go with him if they're quick. 
So they scrambled into their coats and hats, and Millie Molly Mandy ran to ask Mother in a whisper if she might take a penny from her money box to spend in town. And soon they were sitting up close together beside Uncle in the high pony trap, while the little brown pony, whose name was Twinkletoes, trotted briskly along the white road. Little friend Susan hadn't been for many drives. Lily Molly Mandy often went, but she enjoyed this one much more than usual because little friend Susan was so interested and pleased with everything. Billy Blunt was whipping a top outside his father's corn shop as they drove through the village. They waved to him and he waved back. And a little further on, Miss Muggins' niece, Jilly, was wheeling her doll's pram along the pavement and called out, Hello, Milly Molly Mandy. Hello, Susan. And then they drove along a road through cornfields where the little green blades of wheat were busy growing up to make big loaves of bread which is why you must never interrupt them by walking in the corn, even if you see a poppy. When they came to the town, there were crowds of people everywhere shouting about the things they had to sell. And Millie Molly Mandy and little friend Susan followed Uncle about the marketplace, looking at all the stalls of fruit and sweets and books and fish and clothes and a hundred other things. Millie Molly Mandy spent her penny on a big yellow sugar stick for little friend Susan, who broke it carefully in two and gave her half. When Uncle had done his business, he took them to have dinner at a place where all the tables had marble tops, which made such a sharp clatter unless you put your glass down very gently. There were crowds of people eating at other tables round about and a lot of talking and clattering of cups and plates. It was very exciting. Little friend Susan was having a splendid holiday. When they had finished, Uncle paid the bill and led the way back to where Twinkletoes was waiting patiently, munching in his nose bag. And then off they drove again, clippity-cloppity, with Uncle's parcels stowed under the seat. And when they got near home, it did seem strange for Millie Molly Mandy and little friend Susan to go straight past the Moggs's cottage and not have to stop and say goodbye to each other. They squeezed each other's hand all the rest of the way home to the nice white cottage with the thatched roof because they felt so pleased. When bedtime drew near, they had their baths together just as if they were sisters. And then Millie Molly Mandy in her red dressing gown and little friend Susan in Grandma's red shawl sat in front of the fire on little stools with Toby the dog on one side and Topsy the cat on the other while Mother made them each a lid potato for their suppers. First, Mother took two well-baked potatoes out of the oven, and then she nearly cut the tops off them, but not quite. Then she scooped all the potato out of the skins and mashed it up with a little salt and a little pepper and a lot of butter. And then she pushed it back inside the two potato skins and shut the tops like little lids. Then Millie Molly Mandy and little friend Susan were given a mug of milk and a plate of bread and butter and one of the nice warm lid potatoes. And they opened the potato lids and ate out of them with little spoons. They did enjoy their suppers. And when the last bit was gone, mother said, Now you two, I've set the candle in your room and I'll be up to fetch it in ten minutes. So Millie Molly Mandy and little friend Susan kissed goodnight to father and mother and grandpa and grandma and uncle and auntie and stroked Toby the dog and Topsy the cat. And then they went upstairs to bed, hopping and skipping all the way because they were so pleased they were going to sleep together in the spare room. And next day when Mrs. Moggs came round to tell how she had enjoyed her trip and to fetch Susan, Millie Molly Mandy said, Thank you very much indeed, Mrs. Moggs, for Susan's visit. I have enjoyed it.